so here is a, a little cool incidental finding. That is also quite beautiful, huh? Does anyone know what this is? I, I struggled to figure out what this was. I had seen this occasionally before and I didn't know what it was. And it didn't matter because it was like, you know, skin cancer resection and it wasn't at the margin. It was just a little incidental finding. But I, I wondered what exactly was going on here. Has anyone seen something like this? They're, they're keratinocytes, but they're big. Look how huge their nuclei are. And you've got these big, smudgy, homogenized blobs of eosinophilic stuff in their cytoplasm. And then uh, they've got some, some kind of chunkier keratohyaline, purple keratohyaline granules also. So there's one case. Here's a, a different case that I, I think is probably the same thing, although it looks a little different than the last one. Again, it's like up here in the granular layer, there's hypergranulosis and there's big blobs of pink stuff and some cytoplasmic kind of clearing and nuclear enlargement. The nuclei are much larger than their, the neighboring keratinocytes. Look at those nice desmosome spines there. Isn't that pretty? Is it some viral cytopathic change? Ooh, very good. Yes, it is. It is viral cytopathic change. And I like that I like that that you recognize that because it's not just about the pink blob, right? The nuclei are different. And a lot of times in virally infected cells, the nuclei get big. Even if the nuclei, you know, in herpes, we all know that you get herpetic viral change that affects the nucleus. But sometimes uh, cells that don't produce that striking kind of viral cytopathic nuclear change, the nuclei get larger. So molluscum contagiosum is a good example. And this, these pink blobs could kind of resemble molluscum, I think, but molluscum wouldn't be a little tiny focus like this. It usually is invaginated. The blobs are even bigger than this. Um, but so I think it would be fair to think about molluscum here though. It looks a little bit like the, those uh, globules. But the, the enlargement of the nuclei, I think, is really helpful. So HPV, human papillomavirus, tends to do this. It tends to make large nuclei, usually with some pale cytoplasm, in the granular layer, in the skin at least. I know it's a little different in the mucosal sites. But so to me, when I'm looking for coilocytes uh, in skin, I don't, I'm not just looking for a cell with a vacuole. These have vacuoles, but those are artifact. That's not coilocyte, because look how tiny their nuclei are. Coilocytes have large nuclei and they have, they do tend to have pale grayish or vacuolated cytoplasm but the nuclei are large they are usually located near the granular layer so they're kind of paradoxically large right they should be starting to get smaller as they get to the granular layer but instead they become way bigger bigger even than the basal keratinocytes so that really helps me when i'm trying to decide if something's a condyloma or something or a veruca and i'm, I'm looking for coilocytes you don't have to have coilocytes for verrucas or for condylomas but for condyloma i do like to see coilocytes to be sure i'm right about the diagnosis that's a topic for another day i've got a lot of videos about about condylomas and warts but basically this is a little tiny flat wart or a veruca plana now it's not the classic example i'll show you a classic one in a minute in case you're not familiar with it this see this was an excoriation i think an excoriated bug bite maybe or something but this was just a tiny incidental focus off to the side uh I, i'm always interested in like finding little incidental findings because again every once in a while that little incidental finding will be the only thing on your biopsy and you might struggle to figure out what the diagnosis is if you hadn't studied that but also I'm mostly just because I'm a nerd and I like to, to find cool little interesting things to look at. So um, yeah, the, both of these I think are basically an unusual pattern of HPV viral cytopathic effect. So the way I learned that was my friend Wu Chiu Cho, who is a dramatic pathologist at MD Anderson, and uh, I've known him since he was a resident. He published a paper a while back um, about uh, eosinophilic homogeneous intracytoplasmic inclusion bodies in the setting of a, an unusual type of syndromic flat work called epidermodysplasia verusiformis, or EDV. So in their case, they actually sequenced and found out that it was HPV type 49. Like with many things, it, it seems that there's never just one type of HPV that causes a certain thing. Someone will describe it and then they'll say, oh, we've also found this and this and this serotype or virotype, whatever, of HPV that does the same thing. So I feel like the list of different HPVs that can make different types of warts grows ever longer, right? Think about the high-risk HPV. That list continues to grow and it probably will grow and change as we modify the environment by HPV vaccinations, right? So it's kind of a never-ending, uh, changing uh, pattern. But anyway, great paper here. And, and the ones that they show are slightly different than this, but I think that what I have here is basically a variation on this theme. In their case, they had a patient with syndromic uh, EDV, which basically people have a gene, a, a, a germline gene mutation that predisposes in, in the ever one or ever two gene that predisposes them to be 
particularly susceptible to certain types of HPV, and then they get lots of little flat warts that have a very unusual cytoplasmic appearance. So normal EDV does not look like this. I'll show you what it looks like. It normally looks like this. The cells are HPV viral cytopathic effect, but they have this really expanded, very pretty gray blue cytoplasm. So this is well known that in the setting of people with syndrome, they get this, but we also see this relatively often as little tiny incidental foci, little tiny incidental flat warts with EDV like viral cytopathic effect in old folks. Like this is an old sun damaged person, you know, maybe next to a basal cell uh, carcinoma or something. I see this incidentally uh, weekly. I mean, maybe a couple times a week. And I really like it because I think that color of gray blue is so beautiful. And that an HPV effect in the skin usually produces chunky, large, coalesced granules, like the granules all clumped together. So big granules in funny looking keratinocytes, think about, um, uh, think about HPV in general. So those are some examples of uh, EDV. And then it, let's talk about regular Veruca plana, regular flatworm. So to me, I think of EDV and this funny eosinophilic variation of it as basically subtypes of flatwort or Veruca plana. Veruca plana are not as easy to diagnose as regular Veruca vulgaris. Veruca vulgaris has, you know, tall, you know, finger-like papillomatous projections and intoing of the reedy. Veruca plana does not have those things. Clinically, they can be one or sometimes multiple little tiny papules, barely raised, flat-topped. They can be multiple and kind of linear because if you scratch them, they tend to kevnerize or, or grow along the site of trauma. And uh, so that happens, shaving can spread them or people itching at them can spread them. And what they have microscopically is slight, gentle undulation, very vague, blunted papillomatosis of the surface, hypergranulosis, kind of a thickened granular layer, and then this pattern of HPV cytopathic effect. These cells people call bird's eye cells. I don't know why. I don't think they really look like the eye of a bird, but, but maybe I just have not looked at eyes of birds enough. So in any case, these cells that are kind of clear have uniform, slightly enlarged nuclei with a little nucleolus. These are keratinocytes with this unique type of HPV effect that we see in Veruca plana, also known as flatwort. So this is another example. That was a different case. Here's another case. I'm just showing a few examples. Here's one where you've got some Veruca plana here. And then focally in that same Veruca plana, you can see that blue-gray epiderma dysplasia verusiformis EDV type cytoplasmic change. So regular flatwort Veruca plana over here on the left, and then on the right, the EDV subtype. So, so they can coexist together. Isn't that nice? I just think it's kind of fun. And uh, sometimes when you scratch or pick the skin, you get something called lichen simplex chronicus or perigonodularis. And it can also have some overlap. It can get kind of vacuolated, slightly enlarged keratinocytes, slight undulation, hypergranulosis. So sometimes I have trouble actually telling apart. When you've got good, good bird's eye cells like this, no problem. It's going to be um, a Veruca plana. But sometimes I see subtle changes that look kind of like a flat wart, but I think mostly it's just lichen simplex chronicus. Occasionally I'll say, oh, lichen simplex chronicus, but there are some features there that could also be a coexistent Veruca. Like sometimes people have a Veruca and they pick it. So then they get perigo or lichen simplex chronicus change over it. It's very common in skin for us to see people pick and scratch at their skin. It's a common thing to do. All right. And uh, we already did the EDV. So uh, on these posts on Kiko, I've got um, more resources. If you're curious about EDV and Veruca plana, you can go watch. I've got other videos and examples there.